Now we're back to learning GIMP. Let me show you how you can recreate a paper torn effect. We create it from scratch. I've got this one as an original and a black background, so this is where we start. And I've scaled the original so that it fits my canvas and is on top of the entire background. Now I'll create a new layer, let me call it frame and I'll make it transparent. I press Ctrl A, everything is now selected. I go to select and shrink it down a little bit. For my canvas size 15 pixels is good. I confirm. I'll use the paint bucket tool. When you left click now you can see the wrong part is selected. So we have to invert it first under select. Let me make it white. And if I click on this top edge now we have a white frame. Let us merge the frame with the original with this function right here. But I want to copy the original so that we have the original as a backup and I'll make that invisible. Now I've merged it and we're good to go for the next step. We'll use the pass tool right here. Left click and then go over the part that you want to have torn. Hold control when you have arrived at the starting point. Click on it and it's going to close your shape. Afterwards, right click, select from path. To activate the move tool, you can see this is our selection now, but it's a little bit too sharp. So we'll go to select and use this thought. Just keep the defaults, they should be fine. Confirm we are okay. I'm just going to randomize our edge a little bit. Now we want to cut it out and paste it. We can use short keys, Ctrl X, Ctrl V, or under edit the two functions, so Ctrl X to cut out, Ctrl V to paste. It's a floating object. Click on new layer and this object is now on a new layer. You can use the move tool or the arrow keys, left click on it and then left up arrow keys. Let me rotate it a little bit. And I position it on top of the other one slightly, something like this should be good as the position. We will have a better effect when I make this bluish. So let me create a second background. I use the paint bucket tool. So now we can see the next step better because I want to give a drop shadow to the pasted element. I select this layer, I go to filter, light and shadow, drop shadow. And then play around with the values slightly. I want to have grow and blur radius relatively low, opacity not too high, and X and Y is for the position. Something like this should be fine, I confirm. Now I want to have these white fragments on the other side. Let me just call that white crease, white, white fragments, whatever. It's an empty layer for now, so it's transparent again. We want to use the brush tool, make it white as a foreground color. Use a brush with a hardness of 100%. You can also set it right here to 100. And once again, it should be white. You can adjust the size right here. You want to paint on this empty layer, but make sure that this layer is below the original copy. So below our photo. And now if I paint over it, this is what we want. Make it a little bit random and don't have too big white areas. So this was too big. I press Ctrl Z. The more random it is, the more realistic it looks. I 
Well, that should be fine. You want to have it only on one side, so it would be unnatural to have this white area on the other side as well. Now just copy this layer, then right click alpha 2 selection on the top one, paint bucket tool and make it a grayish color. Left click on these areas until they're all grayish. Shift Ctrl A to deselect and then change the blending mode up here to dissolve. And if we zoom in, you can see if I go down with the opacity, we'll get less and less of these grayish pixels. When you zoom out far enough, you're not going to see grayish pixels anymore. You just see a little bit of noise, you could say. And this is what you want to have. Let me go up to here. And that's already it. You can obviously add multiple of these paper tones to one photo if you want to. But the method is always the same. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.